Hello, this is a quick review of the European Breeding Bird Atlas second edition that has been published in November 2020 by the European Bird Census Council. It's a great book, it's a bit heavy though, 4.6 kilos of book, but it's worth every single gram because of this amazing amount of information in the form of maps and text. It's a great, great book. We're going to analyze it a little bit into detail. And uh, we start uh, that uh, explaining by explaining the, the amount of information that you will find in this book is, is, is great. So there's a thorough uh, explanation how they have organized this, uh, uh, especially the, 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 the intake of information, which is, has been the product of a work of 120,000 ornithologists, a lot of field work behind this book. The method, there's just a single chapter to explain to you the method, how, how they have developed this huge study. They have divided uh, Europe into, into grids of 50 kilometers and a finer one of 10 kilometers each side. And uh, they explain uh, how, how they have been uh, uh, doing this uh, research, how the coding each uh, country has... Uh, has assigned a group of workers there's one coordinator for each country and it has involved the work of people not just from Europe but from other in total 50, 50 countries it's a huge amount of effort and information that has been taking around 10 years of, of work and finally we have the results for you to enjoy especially if you are interested in the birds of Europe so there's a first edition of this book. This is the, the second one. The first edition uh, didn't cover uh, big areas of Russia and Turkey and the Canary Island either. And in this edition, number two, uh, we have, as you can see, all Europe is, is very, very much covered in, into detail. So the data is very, very realistic. And I would say that this is 99.999% uh, accurate and, and, and nice. So before uh, we go to the core of the book, which is the, the maps and the distribution for each one of the species, each one of the 596 species, we have to have a look of this uh, in preliminary chapter where they uh, explain the, what's the change for each one of the biogeographical uh, uh, locations in, in, in Europe, all the units. Uh, each one has uh, suffered a different uh, evolution due to either climate change or either man uh, uh, alteration of, of habitats, habitat laws or new laws. For, for example, the, the wetlands, they have more or less improved, but the grasslands, they have lost the biodiversity. Here in the Alpine region, uh, we'll find that uh, uh, there's actually there again in a uh, biodiversity probably because of climate change has been uh, making some birds to to come and choose the alpine areas as the more appropriate for them however for example last year in spain we are losing grassland birds and that's that's a real shame but that's how things are going in in a world, global world like like today we have they will also have a chapter about the non-native species a total of 57 within the five, uh, 596 species that breed in Europe. There's 57 of them that are uh, non-native and they are actually, some of them they are expanding, some other they are decreasing. So it's very interesting to, to read uh, every single one and we'll find it later on, on it on the chapters. There's also a, a little chart on how to, how to analyze the information because there's a uh, three different types of maps for for uh, each species and uh, each one has a you have to to have a quick look at this page first because of the amount of information can be a bit uh, overwhelming so let's go into into the core of the book which is the species uh, account let's start with uh, for example uh, the short ear owl so here we have the short ear owl the short ear owl is a it's a very nice species we have in Europe. And you can see on the map, let's start with the map on the left. You will find this is the abundance map in pairs. So uh, each one of these dots tells you how many uh, birds have been observed during breeding season by these uh, surveyors. And you will find, for example, that I don't know if you'll be able to see here in, for example, Ireland, there's a one tiny dot that tells you that there's between one and nine 
uh, pairs that have been observed here. But actually you don't know if these birds are actually breeding or not. So then you need another map. In this map, this is the breeding evidence map. In this map they, they tell you whether they're breeding or not. For example, here if we go to the same location, you see that this uh, dot is uh, painted in very light color, which means that breeding is possible. So, for example, they have probably seen uh, separate individuals or, or males singing, but they haven't actually proven that uh, they have been successful in breeding. So, this is a very nice uh, complement to, to the first map because this tells you that they, you can actually see them here in, in spring or summer, but this actually tells you if they're breeding or, or not. So, very nice piece of information in these uh, previous uh, maps. A lot of nice illustrations in this in this book. There's a total of 46 uh, artists that have been contributing to this to this one. Let's have a look and, for example, all the all the species, all the distribution uh, maps. For example, here we have the common swift. Uh, we have mentioned this uh, map uh, that has a grid of 50 kilometers, but for some species, they have developed a much more interesting map with a grid of only 10 kilometers. Imagine covering the whole Europe with a grid of 10 kilometers. That's a huge amount of effort. And actually this gives you a very, very nice information that you will never find anywhere else. For example, here for the for the common swift, you see that uh, that bird is a very common bird, for example, here in the in the in the coast of in Spain and also in the uh, in the south uh, east of uh, of uh, the UK and the coast of France the whole Italy but actually if you have a look at at Germany you will find that this species let's see if i can have a better look this species is really much located into into human uh, cities into places where 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 you actually find look at Prague here look at Berlin it's <laughs> It, sorry, München, no Berlin. Yeah, it's actually full of full of Paris, Paris, London. So this in information is quite quite useful, and it's a pity we don't find this uh, ten kilometer uh, grid map for all the species because that would take a huge amount of of, of pages for this book. It's already around ten thousand pages. Uh, sorry, one thousand pages. So that would be a lot of information. But it's it's very very useful for for the for the species that actually have this. We also find an, another interesting map here, which is the map of uh, of uh, evolution of the, of the species. For example, here we see the bee eater. So here in the bee eater, would you find that there is a, a third map? Let's have a look into detail to this third map, which is up here on the right. Let's see if it can focus. Yes, this is the change map. So you actually find three colors. You find gray, you find blue, and you find orange. Where you find gray is that the population is stable. If we compare to the previous edition, blue means that the population is, is expanding. There's even a change index that they have developed. You will find information about all this on the previous chapter, okay? And uh, so you can see that as a result, the evolution of the, of the bee eater in Europe is positive. They are they are increasing in numbers, and they're actually they're moving up. So probably this could be treated as a thermophilic species, or they actually they, they are favored by the by the global warming. I don't know, but the truth is that uh, this information about the change is very important for a lot of species not just for the for the species that come from Africa but also all the species from the north of Europe they are not able to go down uh, to the south for example the some arctic species and they actually they are very much into danger this is another example of a thermophilic species the the red rump swallow which as you can see in the change map it has a positive change index and it also gaining territories in the north of Spain, France, and even they also breeding now in uh, Romania and Hungary. Very interesting information. There's a huge amount of information. It's a book that you can you can have a look every day, and you will not get tired of it. Very nice illustrations. Very nice maps. The density map is very very. It, when you find a density map, then it, it's it's amazing, and. If we focus on the density map, we get the self up high in Wobble. If you look at the density map, you can really find a very good information if you are planning, for example, a bird tour. If you, if you really want to see one species, 
So what you actually do, third, you have this magnificent book, which is the Collinsberg Guide. I think every single builder in Europe have, have this, this book. So for example, let's, let's find, I'm a great fan of Wobbler, so let's find uh, the Spectacle Wobbler. The Spectacle Wobbler is a bird that has a very, uh, very limited distribution in, in, in Europe. It's basically nearly all of them, they, they are here in, in the Iberian Peninsula. Let's see if we can focus a bit better. So if you want, let's suppose you want to look for this bird, you usually have the information provided by, by the Collins, which is a map. So you'll find that the breeding range it is taking nearly half of Spain, but where in Spain? Spain is a big country. Where, where are you supposed to go to find this bird? Or if you want to go to Italy or to or to the coast of the uh, France, uh, southern coast of France, then compare this map with this one. So now you can really see that if you target this area in the central of the can in the in the southeast of the country, you will really have a very nice probability of coming across this species or even the Canary Islands. Look at that it's huge density of this of this species here. And this is this information is something that you you can't find anywhere else. I would say that for the at least for the next 10 or 20 years, this book is going to be the very best one if you want to have detailed information of the distribution of the winter in, of the breeding birds. Don't forget this book is for the wind for the breeding birds. If you if you visit the area in winter then you need you need another guide, you know, but this tells you a lot of information during the breeding bird during the breeding season of the birds. The strangers are, are amazing. I would really recommend uh, having having this book or at least having a look. It's a it's a nice book. You can find it through Links Editions and as I said unrivaled piece of information for every bird that wants to come to, to Europe. Thank you very much for, for watching. I would really like if you subscribe to our YouTube channel. We do birding tours all over Spain and even Morocco and we'll be very happy to see you on board one of them. Have a good day and enjoy.